Kia ora whanau, in this video we'll break down the penalty procedure. There are five parts to the procedure. The whistle, penalty arm, the signal, the mark, and 10 metres. Let's have another quick glance. Notice how the penalty arm is always pointing towards the non-offending team. From there we flow into the signal, before giving the mark, and then 10 metres. It's important to note that the penalty procedure can differ based on the type of penalty, where the referee is positioned on the field, and whether they're staying as a control referee or moving into the support role. Let's have a look at a few examples. I want to get down to the other end. A pick from dummy half, taking it through the short side, over the top, nothing to lose on the fifth and final. Gets a penalty against her for her efforts, but hey, what's five metres? Nice when little pick there from Abby. In this first scenario, we've got a penalty for a touch and pass. First is the whistle. Notice how it's blown on the move. This is then followed by the penalty arm. Then into the signal, the referee gives the mark, then shows 10 metres. Let's take another look at this and point out a few other important details. Notice how the referee is moving into position to complete the procedure near the sideline and wide of the mark. His feet are set while doing the signal to make sure it's done nice and clear. Also important to note that he is facing infield with eyes towards the ball to make sure that the tap is performed properly. Lastly, he moves into the support role position as his buddy moves in to take over as control referee. Good, well, right pass, right to left. good, good set completion uh, for Auckland because the ball's gone out, they can go back, set the defence, uh, move back into their positions. This next scenario is also a penalty against the attacking team. This time, the referee remains as the control ref. The same principles apply for the procedure, but note that the mark is given a little earlier in this one. This is useful to allow play to recommence if the player is ready on the mark. Remember that as soon as you've given the mark and the player is in position, they can tap and go. Also notice how the referee runs ahead of the mark about 5 metres. This is crucial, not only to display the signal clearly, but it also means the referee doesn't have to go as far to set the first 10 metre defensive line. In this clip we've got a penalty against the defence and the referee is positioned infield. We have the whistle and penalty arm and notice how the referee steps out in front of the defensive line to complete the rest of the procedure. Having a second look, similar to the last videos, the referee stands wide of the mark, remains in control during the situation before moving back into the defensive line. Set here. They stack it out on this left side but now some college player got caught up in the ruck so they'll get a repeat set. Here we have a penalty for in the ruck. The whistle and penalty arm are applied at the same time. And notice how the referee moves to the mark, which is advanced 10 metres forward. Because of the proximity to the try line, there is no need to give a 10 metre signal, but rather communicate to the defending team to move to the try line in order to be onside. This is the same when penalties are awarded on the try line. There is no requirement to give a 10 metre signal, as the players are likely already where they need to be in order to be onside. To recap, remember the five steps. The whistle, penalty arm, the signal, the mark, and 10 meters.